Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and welcome to Flower Pro. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create daisy leaves and sunflower leaves and also um, other alternative methods of using this particular mold. This is the new Flower Pro sunflower and daisy leaf um, mold. And this is a, obviously has two sizes of daisy leaf, both a small leaf and a larger leaf. And this enables us to make uh, two different sizes of daisy leaves, all right? Now these daisy leaves can also, as I will be showing in the video, have, can be used for other types of flowers, like this could be used for poppies, for anemones and flowers like that. And you can also do this in a sort of eucalyptus color, which I'm gonna show you as well, which is like the Dusty Miller. Um, that's a very popular like a uh, um, foliage to use for weddings and uh, it's used in a lot of, as I said, bridal bouquets. Um, so this is a very useful um, uh, set of uh, molds. And then the other two cavities here is the smaller and the larger sunflower. And this is used for sunflower leaves. And this is a really stunning, um, obviously, mold. And you can see the beautiful detail here on the leaves is incredible. All right, so you have the beautiful vein in from the back of the veiner as well. So these will be used for the sunflowers. And there are two sizes of mold, which is this size and this size. And then I'm also gonna show you how to make smaller sunflower leaves if you're making the smaller sunflowers, which is gonna be in a separate video. Um, I'll show you how to use the top part of the small cavity. Um, um, the back veiner that comes with this, so this is the back veiner. And this is going to be used to press. Uh, for those who are familiar with Flower Pro, things like the poinsettia, the peonies are going to be used in the same way. And we're also going to use this even for the small daisy leaves as well. So this is a perfect sort of set for foliage. And as I said, so obviously sunflower leaves and daisy leaves, but also other like types of leaves, like I said, anemones, poppies, and things can be made with this cavity here as well. Uh, this one actually, for those who live here in the UK, hawthorn is popular in the autumn fall time. And uh, this is like a hawthorn thorn leaf shape as well. So just with a little bit of imagination, you can look at all the various options you have for foliage. So we're going to get started. I'm going to show you first of all how to make the um, daisy leaves. Okay, so for the daisy leaf, there are two cavities here. We have a small cavity and a large cavity. I'm going to show you actually both sizes here. We're going to start off with a using your size guide, which obviously comes with both of the books. We're going to start off with a number seven small size. I'm using here just the Renshaw green uh, paste. This is just the Renshaw green paste straight out of the pack. You can also, of course, use a um, you know homemade um, paste, and then of course you could color it like with a gooseberry color or moss green color uh, to make this sort of color. But I'm just using this pretty much straight out of the pack. So I want a number seven small. So that's going to be a number seven that just goes through the hole here like this, and then. Um, once we've, we've got this, I'm going to just condition that. So I'm just going to just add a little tiny bit of the white vegetable fat or shorten into this. And I'm going to just use my little mat here. I'm going to roll this into, into a little sausage shape and then into a pointed end, so like a little carrot shape. So this wants to be about the, um, about the length of the mold, okay? Now I'm going to put just a little corn flour cornstarch onto there. All right, I'm just gonna put that down into the mold here. And with this particular leaf, I'm just going to just put a little touch of corn flour on the top here. And then gonna just take my cosmetic sponge as I do on all of my Flower Pro and just work this to the edge. Now you can also um, use a Dresden tool as well. So you can actually also just work that in with a Dresden tool and then just finish that off. Now with both of these leaves, you will have a little bit of excess paste. Just sometimes, you know, though there are 16 holes on the size guide, there are times where, you know, like obviously a regular size where we measure one third below two thirds above is a little big, and even sometimes a small. So what I'm gonna do here, so I'm using number seven small for the small leaf, and I'm just gonna just work that excess paste down. I'm just gonna use my little scraper here, I'm just gonna take this off, or you could use also like a little mini palette knife as well. So you see, it's just a little bit generous, a small uh, number seven. So I'm just gonna take this off, and then I'm going to just use my two fingers here, just gonna press these together, and what this is gonna do is gonna create like a little ridge. I'm gonna take 26 gauge wire, and just remember little tips, like if you keep your wires cut on a magnet, that makes it easy, they're not gonna be falling around. I'm gonna just dip the wire into some egg white, so I'm gonna put a little bit of egg white or edible glue onto here. And then what I'm gonna do here is just gonna feed this into your little trough here. It's gonna go into the, into here. Now I'm going in about, um, 
about two thirds of the way into the leaf. It's not so important on this one, but especially on this one here, the larger one, because it is shallow there. In a lot of leaves I do, like if you watch my rose leaves, for example, only go halfway in. So if we only went halfway into this leaf here, what it means is you have a little bit of, it's quite narrow here, so it's going to be a little bit weak. So you're actually going to ex extend the wire a little bit further than we would normally do. So we're going in about two thirds of the way into the recess there. Once we have got the paste um, into there, we're going to then take the back veiner. So just like all of the Flower Pro uh, double sided veiner, you're just going to line this up with the wire. So you see the wire is actually there in the V shape. Just going to just press this onto the back here. And this will just give you a little bit of veining onto the back of the leaf, okay? And then we're just going to just flex the mold here. And then your leaf will come out here. All right, just going to mold that around. And then we're going to use actually the back of the, going to use the back of the veiner here. And with my Dresden tool, I'm actually going to just uh, use the Dresden tool here. And I'm going to make this a little bit shaggy on the edge. So you're just going to actually put a little bit of, Corn flour, corn starch down, and it's going to just go around your edge of your leaf, making this a little bit shaggy here. Remember, if your wire should come out a little bit, just press that back in because it can just be embedded back into the leaf really easily. Okay, and then we're going to take your, and we're going to just hollow the base of this. And we will then put this to dry onto a crepe foam former. So this just gives your leaf this nice natural shape, okay? So that's sort of how you would do the smaller leaf. Now, when you're doing the larger leaf, we would just go up one size. So we're gonna use a number eight small. Okay, so number eight small here. And remember, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit like sometimes when we cook, when we make a crepe or an omelet, like sometimes the first one sticks. When your molds are new, you have to almost like condition them. So just make sure, as I said, you use a little bit of um, corn flour, corn starch onto your mold. Um, another alternative method you can use is just a little tiny bit of white fat, okay? And you can just put a little tiny bit of white fat onto there as well. And that's another way that you can release things. You know, some of my molds in Flower Pro, like for example, um, when I use the, um, when I do the calyx, I use that, it's quite a shallow mold. So again, we're just gonna just make that into a carrot shape. Just make sure, as I said, it's not, it's not sticky. But as I said, you can use the corn flour onto here, or you can, of course, put a little bit of fat into there. So again, I'm just gonna put this into the mold here. And again, I'm just gonna now just work that to the, just using your fingers here, just sort of work the paste into the mold. And then you're gonna come down here and I'm gonna sort of push out from each side. Because remember, we want to have this a little bit thinner. And just remember with the aid of your Dresden tool as well, you can just pop that that in. You see how I'm just working that little bit of excess paste. Remember number seven small for the small leaf, number eight small for the larger leaf, but both of those will have just a little bit of excess paste um, just because the size is a little bit generous. And then we're going to again just going to put a little ridge down here. I'm going to take your wire just so you can see the two the process again but also the two sizes. And again you're going to just take your wire here and this is going to just be threaded into your, into the little ridge here, okay? And just remember, you want to go in about two thirds of the way into the leaf. So the actual wire is going into about here, okay? Just going to mold around the bottom here. And again, we're just going to take the veiner, going to line this up, just going to press this on. Now you don't even have to do this, but as I said, you can use this veiner, but you could also use, for example, other, um, veiners that we have, but you see this will release really, really easily. Now, one thing I will mention, you know, when you're using uh, white fat or vegetable shortening on the mold, it's a minimal amount, okay? So literally you just touch, put a little tiny bit on your finger, okay? Because uh, when you are dusting the flowers, um, if you take vegetable fat and you sort of basically put some on the table, in a week's time it's still gonna be very, it doesn't really dry. So just a minimal amount uh, goes on your finger just to rub into the molds, okay? And then when you finish with the mold, I would just suggest just washing it with a little bit of dish soap uh, just to get rid of the grease off of there. And then um, using the back of this, or as I said, the back here, we're gonna then just take your, and we're gonna go around here. So I'm using my Dresden tool on its side, and this is just gonna make the leaf a little bit shaggy, okay? 
And then remember, you're going to just take this, you're going to use the companion tool, point it down, just going to hollow your base, and you're going to pop your leaf onto here uh, to dry. Okay. Now, when you make the um, the uh, dusty miller, which is this foliage here, okay, which has a nice texture to it, um, all I'm doing is exactly the same technique. All right. The only difference is I'm going to be using like a eucalyptus color. And when I made this like eucalyptus color, what I actually did is I just took some um, blue uh, flower modeling paste and some green, and I used three parts blue to one part green, all right? But uh, so if you took 30 grams of blue and 10 grams of green, um, you mix them together, that blue is gonna give you that more eucalyptus color. But of course, you could also use a little bit of blue, a little tiny bit of green into white paste and achieve that same sort of color. And the only difference is because it is a lighter color, I've used white wire here uh, for the, um, as I said, for the Dusty Miller leaf. Um, so these now need to dry and then we're going to move on to the next stage which is going to be the coloring of those and finishing off. So once the leaves have dried, um, so a leaf like this would normally take about two hours to dry. I also use a food dehydrator, that's a really good way to speed up drying process, normally set on about 115 put it in there for about 45 minutes. Um, usually you let these dry and then probably stand them up just to let them continue drying or hang them on a drying rack. But anyway, once these are dried, we're going to move on to the next step. So just like on a lot of the foliage I've shown on Flower Pro, we're going to just take some half width light green floral tape. We're gonna start off about two and a half centimeters, about an inch down the stem, slide that up to the bottom. Just come down about two and a half centimeters so just slide this up to the bottom of the leaf, just come down, break this off. Now I'm going to use a moss green color. So I'm going to use some moss green color dust. Of course, daisies can be done in different colors, but this is going to give contrast. So I'm going to just put some moss green color here onto there. And then with the leaf, what I'm going to do here is using my, um, my brush, I'm using an angle flat brush, I'm going to brush down the middle of the leaf and I'm just gonna brush into the main lateral veins. That means the sort of the, the lateral veins, your central vein and then your side veins. On the back, I'm just gonna just do a green stripe just down the middle here, like so. And then I'm actually just gonna go around the very, very edge with this brush here. So this will just give me a slightly darker color around the edge, okay? So this will be the small one. So remember, use your brush on its side to cut in but you see this is sort of mossy green color will give you a nice contrast. And remember, there's lots of different brands of dusting powder, so names vary, but just look for something that looks like almost like a mossy green color. Um, and remember the back here, I'm just gonna use just a little green stripe down here, okay? Once I finish that, um, of course you could put this back into the pot. Um, you're going to then just lightly steam those. Um, we're gonna steam them just to sort of basically set the color. And then we will, as I glaze these, so we're just gonna just set the, and then with the steamer here, so I'm just gonna now just lightly steam the leaves. Remember you can use a tea kettle here as well, but just lightly steam those. And then we can either use a spray lacquer or we can use a brush on lacquer. This is a spray lacquer here. Remember I said, make sure you work on a protected area and I would either put gloves on or hold them well down here. And just gonna just spray, just gently spray onto the leaf here. And this will give you the, then once this evaporates, all right, this will give you the nice natural look of the leaves. So you can see they will have more, they won't be quite as shiny once they dry, all right? They always look very shiny when you first um, lacquer those. And that will be your, um, as I said, daisy leaves. Now, when we are doing, when we are doing the Dusty Miller, so just bringing in my iPad here, and you know, whenever you're doing flowers, I mean, you can do a search on like Google, I just put in Dusty Miller, but you'll see the shape of this leaf varies a lot, you know, so some of them are very sort of shaggy, and then some are more like the shape that we've got here. Um, so this one is very fine, but this said, it's a very popular, she's very popular to use in bridal bouquets. Um, so, but this is said, it's just an alternative you could use with using this particular cutter. Now this is, um, so this is my Dusty Miller leaf, all right? So first thing you're gonna do is gonna tape this in the same way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have um, ready here. 
So I'm going to have some semolina. So semolina is used for um, on baking pizzas and obviously for certain Italian cookies. And what I've done here is I've taken a little bit of semolina and then I've taken a little bit of white dusting powder, okay? So what I've done is I just put literally in a little shaker, I put just a, about a teaspoon of semolina and I just added about a quarter of a teaspoon of white powder. So what I've actually done is I've made the semolina sort of not quite as yellowy, so it's a little bit white uh, with the powder. And I'm going to use this for texture. Now this technique I also use for things like poppy stems and I use green semolina. So if you actually use like moss green in your semolina, you can actually make like the fuzzy stems of uh, certain flowers. So this is a technique I use for a lot of things. So you need to have your semolina ready. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I haven't dusted the flower yet. I'm just going to just steam the front of the leaf only. All right, so I'm just going to steam the front of the leaf. And then what you're going to do is you're going to then, while it's sticky, you're just going to lightly sprinkle that with the with the semolina, okay, with the white semolina. So you see how so what's going to happen is going to stick to it, okay? Now then what you need to do is you don't do anything on the back, all right? You then need to let this dry. So leave it about 30 minutes to dry, okay? And then once that's dried, so I have one here that's already dry, okay? So you see the semolina won't sort of come off of there because it's stuck to the moisture. I'm then going to take some... Uh, this is like a pale uh, teal color, like a eucalyptus color, and some white. And what I'm going to do here is because I want to make this opaque, I'm going to mix a little bit of white and a little bit of a uh, eucalyptus color, like a pale teal color together. So it's going to make this sort of bluey color because, as I said, the, these leaves are sort of almost like a eucalyptus color. And then what you do here is you're going to just sort of brush this over the back of the leaf, like this. If you brush this over the back of the leaf and then what you're actually going to do here you're going to just brush this over the front and you see what's going to happen is you're still going to get the texture because as i said it has almost like a sort of a bit like lamb's ear has that sort of like wool texture this has just got like a little bit of texture to it so i found this works really really well um, to to put this onto onto there like so and then what you can do here is you can just very lightly you don't have to re-steam re this, but you can just lightly spray that with a little bit of spray lacquer. All right. And then what you would do is so you then would then take this and you'd use your pair of pliers here. So with my pair of pliers, move this out of the way. I'm just going to take this. You see then you're just going to just put this into, into an arrangement here like so and then taking my floral tape, and I've just used this on a 22 gauge wire, so I've just added this to a 22 gauge wire. And of course you could do different groupings of leaves. This particular group in here, I have three um, of two of the smaller leaves and then three of the larger leaves. And then I would also just go in with a little bit of that bluey green color as well. And just going to dust that onto the floral tape. So your floral tape will have that sort of uh, eucalyptus sort of color here. So a little bit of the white. I'm just going to brush this onto the top. And then what I will do is I will just lightly steam this. And then the steaming, what that will do, that will actually just give, um, just also set the color on the stem as well. Um, when I show on the sunflower, like coloring the dust on the stem again, you just want to just steam that lightly. So you're just gonna just gonna lightly steam this, and that will just obviously set the stem here, like so. So you can see here you have your daisy leaves and you have your dusty miller leaves made with my new Flower Pro sunflower and daisy leaf mold. So I hope you'll enjoy making this. Um, the sunflower is going to be coming up, the sunflower leaf next. So I'm going to show you how to make the fabulous sunflower leaf in three different sizes. So see you in a minute. So now we're going to move on to show you the next part of the uh, mold, which is going to be the two sizes of sunflower leaves. So this actually makes the, we call the small sunflower leaf and then the large sunflower leaf. And you'll see those used actually on the sunflower segment with the sunflower flower. But uh, I'm also going to show you how to make a smaller version using the small size one. So, so we're going to start off, I'm going to show you here the uh, small leaf here, which actually will start off with a number 11 size piece of paste. Um, so on my size guide here, I'm going to measure a normal number 11. So remember, like we've done before many times, one third below, two thirds above. And this is the uh, same green, just a Renshaw green or a moss green color uh, to start off with. Now, when we make the 
um, sunflower leaf, we're going to make a carrot shape about three quarters of the length of the actual recess or cavity here. So first of all, I'm just going to condition my paste. So I'm just going to take just a little tiny bit of vegetable fat into here. Okay. And then I'm going to now roll this into a carrot shape. You can just do this on your work surface or on like a little silicone mat. This wants to be about approximately about three quarters of the length of the mold here. It's just a little tiny bit more. Okay. All right. So you can see this is about three quarters, approximately the length of the mold here. Okay. Now you can either use a little mat like this, or you can actually use the two parts of the vena. Just put a little bit of corn flour down. I thought this is silicone and the paste doesn't really stick to it, but we're going to actually press this. So think of this like a carrot shape. We're going to use the back part of the vena. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to squash these two together because what this does, it actually squashes the paste. So it will give you initially like a flattened out piece, very similar to the way we do the poinsettia. Okay. Um, and uh, so this is going to give you just helps initially to get it into the mold. Now, again, like I showed on the daisy, you can either dust this paste liberally with corn flour, corn starch, or you can just take a little tiny bit of vegetable fat shortening, but just very, very minimal amount. Okay. And just going to put this into the mold. This will just help with the release. But as I said, if you're using the corn flour, just obviously put the corn flour on there um, and the, as well. So you're going to place this onto here like now. Okay. Then we're going to now take, so in my sort of technique I use for my flower pro, you see what we're now doing is we're working the leaves to the edge. So this will mean that you're actually, your paste is going to come right the way to the edge where you have the serration. All right. And so you're going to do this both sides. I'm going to just turn this around to whatever is convenient for you, but you can just move the molds around. So you see, you naturally have this little bit thicker area in the middle, which is what we want, because that's going to emulate the thickness where our wire will go in. You know, in traditional flower making, which this is obviously a totally reinvented way of making flowers and foliage, uh, typically, you know, a lot of times in traditional flower making, you would use a groove board, which will create a ridge, most like a vein, and then your wire will go into here. So you just kind of press this onto the top, just like I showed on the daisy. You see, now I'm actually creating my slight ridge here. Now on this small leaf, we're going to use a 22 gauge wire. So this is a 22 gauge green or white wire. Just going to dip that into some egg white. And again, it's going to go into the little trough here. And it's just going to go in about halfway into, so you just feel that tickle your finger, but really you can't go wrong here because these molds have been designed with this little trough. So you see that little hollow there is where your wire is going to thread it in perfectly. Okay, it's going to press this around. So now we're going to do the back. So again, just like I've showed you, you're going to just bring this onto here. So on this one here, all I do is I just bring this down so that the you can see the V shape is basically on level with the mold here. I'm just going to press this on onto the back here like that. You need to press fairly firmly, just sort of walking up and down with your fingers. Just have a look and you see how it's going to give you a beautiful vein in, okay? And then I'm just going to just gently take this out of the mold. All right. So you see how you're going to have this beautiful leaf. It's going to be the back of your leaf. Okay. Now we're going to use the pad and I'm just going to use my little stick here. And I'm just going to go around just a little bit like I showed on the, um, on some of the other uh, leaves and things I've done. So we're just going to soften. Remember when you have veining on the back, you want to do this on the edge of your pad going to use your little tiny companion tool, the shaft of this, and it's going to go around your leaf like this. Okay. We're then going to turn this over, going to use the shaft of the companion tool. And I'm going to just pinch this around. So you're going to create like a slight taco shape, like a Mexican taco shell here. So you have this slight V shape here, and then we're going to dry this. Now you can dry this in a, um, uh, crate foam so you can dry this on a crate foam former like this so this just dries it in a slight V shape um, you can also use uh, for example this is a former as actually for ice tubes uh, for water bottles but this also works great because you leaves will dry into here giving you a slight almost like taco shape all right the tip can come over the top 
And then the uh, third option you can use, which actually is the way I've done the large leaf, is I take a piece of aluminum foil. Now this is uh, food service foil, so it's used for like hot dogs and wraps and things like that. So it's a little bit fi a little bit thinner than regular aluminum foil, which is a little bit thick. All right, so I'm just gonna fold this in half. And then what you would do here is I'm just gonna use three fingers, I'm gonna put two fingers underneath the foil, one finger on top, and I will actually create almost like a sort of a, a V shape here in the foil. And so this means when you put your leaf onto there, you see how it will sit like this, all right? So you see how it actually dries in that V shape. So lots of options there, so you know, depending on what you have, but foil works very, very well, all right? Um, you'll see when I do the sunflower, which is in obviously a separate uh, video using this for obviously drying the sunflower in as well. But this, as I said, is just a thinner uh, foil, um, as I said, than a regular roll, you take off the roll. So this is a little bit more flexible, it's a little bit easier to manipulate and uh, forming a shape. So, so that would be the um, how we do the sunflower small leaf. Now, when we do the large leaf, all right, it's exactly the same technique. The only difference is there we're going to be using a number 13 size ball of paste. So you just still make that three quarters of the way at the sausage, a carrot shape. And then you're going to use a 20 gauge wire, okay? So basically you're going to do exactly the same. 20 gauge wire goes in about halfway up and that would be your large leaf. And I said this would normally be dried in the foil former because this is really a little bit too big, this size leaf for the uh, foam or for the other former, all right? And then I want to show you how to make, so you can see these are the two sizes, the large and small from the mold. And then I'm gonna show you here how to make a smaller sunflower leaf as well. Because when, um, when I show you, if you watch my sunflower video, you will see how I show two different sizes of sunflower. So this is good for the large size sunflower. Um, but when you make the smaller size sunflower, um, especially for a smaller cake, you'll find you probably need this one and then a smaller one, okay? So this is really easy to do from, from the mold. So all we do there, we're gonna use the small cavity and we're going to take a number nine size ball of paste. So we actually have number nine for the basically the extra small one, number 11 for this size one, and then number thir number 11 for this one, and 13 for this one, okay? And um, so here, again, we're just going to just take that. But if you don't have a silicone mat, you see, you can actually use your back of your uh, vena here as a, like a little silicone work mat. So this also works extremely well. So you see, you can just, this is great for figure modeling and all sorts of things. All right, so here, what I'm actually gonna do there is I'm just gonna make this about half the length of the top half, okay? Because that's about the size I'm going to make it. And then again, I'm gonna just put this onto a mat. So remember, though we do, it is made from silicone, I'm gonna use my um, back of the vena here. Just gonna flatten this. What this means, doing it like this, it actually just saves a little bit of time in pressing it all to the, to the mold. I'm gonna peel this off. Again, gonna take just a little tiny, well, I'll show you. This one I'll do with corn flour, corn starch, all right? So remember, as I said, if you're using just corn flour, just do a li fairly liberal amount because it's gonna be dusted anyway. So I'm gonna put that towards the top of the, top of the mold here, like so. And then again, you're going to just sort of press this to the edge. Now what you're doing is you're using this as your sort of template. So you see how I'm pushing the paste towards the edge here like that with my hands and my fingers. All right, so what we're, trying, what we're doing here, and you can sort of push this in, so you almost want to emulate that same shape, all right? So you see, so we don't want it like to be square here, like a Christmas tree, but you're actually just following that same, almost like emulating that same shape there, okay? And then again, you're gonna just create your little ridge here. All right, and then we're gonna take your wire here, now this is actually a 24 gauge wire, so you use 20 for the biggest leaf, a 22 for the, um, the full size, this leaf, and then this is a 24. So just a lot of times when we're making flowers. And again, you see how this, though this is gonna go across, it still will go in in the same, in the same way here. So just gonna come across here, just gonna feel that, just go into the paste, just feel that sort of come into the paste here, like so. All right, and then and I'll show you how we do the veining on the bottom. So again, we're gonna then line this up. So this is gonna be your vein in here. All right, 
And when you do the when you do the big one, um, you know, on the big leaf there, you're just going to just line this up with the edge of the. So remember, this one is lined up, and then this one here is just going to be lined up. But remember, always make sure that your wire is in the center of that V shape. You see? All right. So they're going to take this take this off now. I'm going to pinch this around so you see it's going to give you the small leaf. Now this could actually also be used for like a hibiscus leaf, all right? So this you could actually make smaller sizes like this for hibiscus leaves or even hydrangea leaves as well, okay? So though this is a sunflower leaf, like with most of the flower flow, I designed this so you can use it for multiple use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this onto my, um, onto my uh, mat here. And then I'm going to take my Dresden tool and then what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to put the serrations around here. So using my Dresden tool, I'm just going to just pull out gently here. So you see how it actually will then create the serrations. So four or five times there, because obviously the bottom of the leaf there, you've got those little serrations. So just using your Dresden tool like this will create that serration on there. And again, and then another um, way, um, if you don't have a pad, you can also just use the edge of your, the edge of this, all right? And of course, if you only have the mini pad, when you're doing the big pad, the big leaf like this, you're just going to soften that on the back of the vein or on the back of this one. Um, so it's just giving you options and just showing you different techniques of doing this thing. And then again, we will take that, just going to hollow that, and this is going to just dry again in the crepe foam and that will give you the, the smaller size leaf, okay? So you can see here, that's the one that's the only half filled the mold. This is the small size leaf. This is the large size leaf for the sunflower, okay? So we need to let those dry. Now a big leaf like this will take a couple of hours. Again, you could dry this for about an hour and then put it in the food dehydrator, but I would suggest dry them for about an hour on the former and then either hang them, so hang them on a hanging rack or in the food dehydrator to continue drying for another two or three hours. You know, depending on your temperature of where you live, the humidity level and things, that will affect obviously how long things take to dry. Of course, a leaf this size is gonna take longer to dry than a leaf this size. So once those are dry, we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to be right back showing you how to color and finish these off. So once the sunflower leaves are totally dry, we're going to tape them. Now, when we are doing certain leaves, like when I teach magnolia leaves, here we have sunflower leaves, because it's a larger leaf and also that the stem of the sunflower, like the stem of magnolias and things is quite thick. Rather than just doing one single layer of tape, which is fairly normal, we're actually going to build the tape up. So what we're actually going to do here is going to just start like I did on the ferns and other leaves. We're going to just start down about a two and a half centimeters, about an inch. I'm going to slide that up to the bottom of the leaf. All right, I'm going to come down about three centimeters, just over an inch. Then I'm going to come back up to the base of the leaf, and then I will then come back down again. Okay, so I've actually done three times. Okay, so you're going to go sort of uh, down, up, and then down. So you see how it makes the, this about two, two and a half centimeters will be visible a little thicker, so it looks more natural. Now, when you do the large leaf, the biggest size one, I've actually done five times, all right, because obviously this is gonna be used further down the stem, the actual real stem will be a little thicker. So I went down, up, down, up, down, so five times on that. The two smaller size leaves, I do three times, okay? Now, when we color this, we're going to um, color this and again, colors, you know, obviously depends on what you have, but you want sort of like an apple green, sort of brightish green here. All right, so you can see sort of an apple green color. And then this is a foliage green, which is obviously a darker green I've used in a lot of my other videos as well. So I'm going to use the apple green. Now remember, if you only have a dark green, uh, what you can also do is blend colors. Like if you add some yellow to darker green and sometimes a little bit of cornflower, cornstarch, but you want sort of something of a sort of apple-y color. And we're gonna use this all over the leaf. So this is gonna give me a base color. This is the same color I actually used on the hydrangea. But I said this could be used for a hydrangea leaf as well. All right, um, so this will actually work well for hydrangea leaves as an alternative if you didn't have a you know cutter and veiner. So think of this as I said it's not only a sunflower and a daisy leaf it's a multiple multiple use uh, products you know because as I said when we design all of the flower pro we always think in terms of what else you can use this for. Okay so you're going to do this all over the leaf. Now then I'm going to take some foliage green which is a little bit of a sort of a darker bluey green color 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to accentuate the lateral vein, which is the central vein. So I'm going to use the brush on its side here. I'm going to brush down the middle of the leaf. Okay. I'm going to do that front and back. So it's going to just kind of come down with that, just to give you that darker line down here. I'm going to just come around the edge, a little bit like how I did onto the daisy leaves. So this will accentuate the um, serrations here. All right, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm actually just going to change out to a smaller flat brush here. This is just a little angled brush here. So that I want to then just sort of cut into the these main side veins. It's just that red brush was a little bit big for that. So it's going to, it's going to come into those side veins here. And then once you've done that, Okay, so you see, and just do that on the front of the leaf because that's obviously where the main vein is going to be. Just going to get rid of my. Remember, I'm using like paper towel here, and then I'm just, of course, just throwing that away. But you can also work on parchment paper, then you can fold it. Paper plates also work really well. Um, like at my school in Atlanta, when I teach, I use paper plates a lot because you can fold the paper plate and it's easy to get the dust back into the container. Now we're going to. Um, going to steam the leaf all right because we have two-tone coloring so again in some of my other flower pro foliage i've shown this technique so we're going to steam this lightly what that's going to do that's going to set the powder all right and then what we're going to do is we're then going to lacquer or glaze the leaves so we're going to just bring the steamer in here and i was going to just lightly steam the leaf here just for a second all right and then we're going to then um, glaze this. Now, again, in um, some of my other projects, I've talked about options. You know, one option is to use a leaf glaze, all right? So this is actually like a leaf glaze. This is my brand, but several companies do this. It's a diluted confectioner's glaze, which is like a full strength glaze. So this is diluted generally with like a grain alcohol, um, isopropyl alcohol type of base. And so this can be used, or of course you can also use the spray lacquer as well. Now, especially if you were using a brush on glaze, um, the reason why we steam this is that if you then brushed, if we didn't steam this leaf, when you brush over the top of this, what would happen is all of that color would just all become one, okay? But so as I said, this is just showing you one option that this would be a brush on glaze. But as I said, depending on where you live, many, many companies sell confectioner's glaze, uh, but a lot of companies also sell like a leaf glaze. So you see, you just would brush this on. Of course, this has to uh, dry. It's going to look very shiny when you first do it. And then as I showed on the daisy leaves, of course, this is just showing you the two options. You can then lightly spray with this, all right? So this is, of course, convenient. And uh, for certain things, it's sometimes a little bit easier than brushing on more complicated leaves. But uh, it gives you the same effect, all right? Um, and then this leaf is going to dry. And then once it's dry, it's going to have that sort of, you see again, like I showed you on the daisy, looks. this looks very plasticky at the moment. That's also why we would never use full strength confectioner's glaze like I used in my Calorly project. Because full strength confectioners they would look would stay like this all right which we really don't want um, on leaves you want just a natural luster on the leaf and uh, so you can see here this actually shows you the the leaves so here you have your sunflower leaves all right so beautiful sunflower leaves here and then we have the daisy leaves so here you have your daisy leaves and then of course variations on that like the dusty miller here uh, here as well. So I hope you will enjoy uh, have a lot of fun with this mold Remember very versatile for lots of different leaves with this part lots of different leaves with this part You know those of you members of our flower pro Facebook group um, As I said, you know share your ideas, you know if you come up with a new leaf made with each of these veiners or cutters uh, Veiners uh, obviously let us know um, Because that's also what the group is about about sharing ideas um, And remember there are thousands of different types of leaves so as I said, just come up with some new ideas for using this. So I'll see you in my next video really soon. So sweet wishes and see you again really soon. Bye-bye.